Hi there, welcome to another video for GeoCert Higher Level Maths. Today we're looking at a new topic, statistics. And all statistics start with a question. Like I have an example here, how many hours a day do people spend on their phones? Well, the answer for that could be different for me as it is for you. So we have to use statistics in order to get a better idea of what is going on for a large group of people. So we call that gathering information or gathering data. Data is unorganized information. There are two types of data. Numerical data, which are numbers, the clue is in the numeric, numerical. So that would be your age, height, number of students in a school. They're all number values, so they're numerical data. And categorical data, which are words, like category, words. So you have maybe true or false questions, male or female, your eye color, your favorite band, all of those you're answering with words. So they would all be categorical types of data that you're collecting. How to go about collecting the data then? Well, there's the two types. There's primary data, which is where you go out and collect the data yourself to then use in your statistical investigation. Or another type of data is called secondary data, where someone else has already gone out and collected the data and you're just going to use that. So that might be where the government have carried out a census or you're reading a newspaper article or you've searched online for information. You'd be familiar with those terms from history as well, where you'd have a primary source and a secondary source. If you were to go out and collect your own data, a couple of ways of doing that might be to do a survey of people. You might interview someone or you might carry out an experiment. So down in science where you'd actually do an experiment and collect the data there yourself. That's data collection. If you're looking at questionnaires, we've probably all filled out a questionnaire at some point where it's an online survey or it's come in the post or you've had someone just hand you one in school. But what makes a good survey? or a good questionnaire? Well, it should be clear what information you're trying to collect. If I'm doing a survey about people's diets, there's no good putting on in a question about, you know, what's your favorite band? Because it has nothing to do with the type of diet that you take. Another one should be, it should be short, clear questions. You see this in Matt's exam papers even, where they'll start off and they'll be telling you a story at the start try and confuse you and throw you off the scent of it. If you want to have a good questionnaire, you should have short, very clear questions. You should ask one question at a time so that people will answer one question at a time. And start with easy questions so that people are likely to continue. If you've already filled in four or five questions, you're likely to stay going. Then if the first question is quite difficult, you probably won't attempt it at all. Provide space for answers. You'd be surprised how many times people spend a lot of time coming up with their questions and laying it out and it all looks great and there's nowhere for anyone to write down the answers. So you need to think about it from someone that was filling it in. Make it easy for them. Avoid leading questions. So they would be like, do you think people who don't like maths are weird? Well, that's a leading question because it's implying that people that don't like maths are weird, so you'd be more likely to agree with the statement. That's a leading question. You might get a lot of that if someone's trying to criticize the government or someone, they might give a leading question so that they get the data that they want. And avoid personal questions. So like, what, height, what weight are you? What age are you? How much do you earn? People aren't likely to be comfortable at always answering that information or giving out personal information. So if it's not completely necessary, just avoid that type of data as well. Bias then is a very important factor when it comes to collecting statistical data. Bias is where a certain group of people are excluded from the data, either intentionally or unintentionally. So you might actually know that you're excluding them. It might just be that there's a quirk with the data system that you're using. You know, maybe you're using, we have an example here that of you might be carrying out a survey on Instagram. Well, why might that be a biased survey? Well, obviously because 
a lot of people that are older probably don't have Instagram. So you're getting just a subset of the population. You're probably getting young people, people that are into social media. You're actually excluding an awful lot of people that way. Leading questions can also result in biased answers that make the data unfair. So bias is something that you really want to watch out for. Collect, once you have the data collected, then you need to begin organizing it because we said that the data was unorganized information. So we need to begin organizing it before we can actually do some statistics on it. Frequency tables are a good place to begin. And we use a tally system in frequency tables. So a tally will be where you're counting it up with little marks. So if we're counting, let's say eight here, we will go one, two, three, four, and then the fifth tally will be a little mark across like that to put into a bundle of five. And then we'll go six, seven, eight. So you can easily count it in groups of five and then whatever's left over at the end, you can add on. So it's a quick way of just counting up. And then the frequency is how many times a piece of data occurs. So it usually comes after the tally. So in this tally here in purple, the frequency will be eight. An example then, a group of people were surveyed on how many cars their household had, grouped the results into a frequency table. So all my data points are listed out here, two, two, one, two, zero, all the number of cars they had, and I have a frequency table drawn up as well. Where I have the number of cars on the top row, so zero, one, two, three, or four, a tally row, followed by a frequency row. To fill in the tally row, how many people had zero cars? Well, one, two, there's two zeros, so my tally is two. How many people had one car? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven people had one car, so my tally is going to be one bundle of five and an extra two. How many people had two? Eight. So it's going to be one bundle of five and three extras. Three cars was just two, and four cars was one. So that's my tally row, and then quite easy to fill in the frequency row. Zero cars, just two. One car, was seven. Two cars was eight. Three cars was two, and one car, four cars was one. And that gives me a total of 20 families surveyed. So that's statistics. Data entry, data collection. It's important that you're able to fill in a frequency table, identify bias, and know the two types of data. Hope you found it useful.